Welcome to Headlines Now with me, Deepti. Before we move on to all the stories in detail, let's have a look at the top headlines. India's parliament marks the 60th year of its first sitting with a special session. MPs say or in the house is their biggest concern. Nidumaran slams Sushma Swaraj over her comments on Tamil Nadu political parties and the Lankan war. The NLC contract workers' strike doesn't seem to come to an end with the third round of talks failing yet again. Engineering College's applications and Anna University are on high demand. Nityananda wants to meet Jalalita to sort out the Madure Adina Matro. Now, Anna Hazar extends the hand of friendship to Army Chief General V.K. Singh. Yadirupa's surprise praise of Sonia Gandhi as the divide in Karnataka BJP comes out in the open yet again. Maldives President Mohammed Vahid tells there is no chance China would step into India's shoes. in detail. It's been 60 years since the first sitting of the Indian Parliament in 1952. Speaking in the Rajya Sabha, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh said it's time to rejoice as we have had an uninterrupted parliamentary democracy at a time when many other countries are struggling to hold on to their democracy. Speaking at the special sitting of the Parliament, our parliamentarians reflected on the years gone by and the challenges that lie ahead, many even focusing on the priority of getting order in the House. The President addressed a special joint sitting of both the houses she where the oldest her. members and those who were part of the first Lok Sabha were facilitated. We must take a call at this juncture. After our journey of 60 years and, res and resolve to work collectively for this goal through a well-built democracy, as it is said in a shloka, Aikyam Balam Samanjasya which means unity is the strength of any society and society is weak without it. Here are a few excerpts from the speeches made today. That is not to say that we should not reflect with concern on the repeated disruptions of proceedings and a regrettable unwillingness on occasion to engage in informed discussion. On this momentous occasion of the completion of 60 years of the functioning of the House, I hope that we can write a new chapter and restore to it the sense of dignity and decorum that is expected of a House of Elders. Today's हम ये विशेष बैठक करके आयोजित कर रहे हैं मना रहे हैं जनता के कारण ही हमारी संसद और हमारी संसदीय प्रणाली 60 वर्षों की ये यात्रा सफल कर पाई है मैं उन सब का अभिनंदन An anniversary is also a moment of reflection to consider our role and place in the rich fabric of our nation's life and history. The integrity and independence of Parliament must be preserved and protected at all costs with no, with no room for compromise. It's an occasion to rejoice. It's also an occasion to introspect and prepare ourselves for the challenges of the future. It's a tribute to our parliamentary system that despite divergence, Despite ideological differences, when it came to the call of the nation, we all stood up and spoke in one voice. 60 years is a long time in Indian parliamentary life. We shall remember the contributions made by our elders and the standards they have maintained and set for ourselves and we should try to reach out there. The most important thing is that we will do again that this society, the parliament, has so much importance. 
सौ करोड़ से ऊपर लोग अपनी आस्था इस संस्था में लगाकर बैठे हुए हैं उनकी उम्मीदें हैं वो अपना काम चाहते हैं वो कुछ आज़ाद भारत से कुछ हासिल करना चाहते हैं अपने अपने परिवारों के भविष्य के लिए और हमारा फर्ज बनता है मुझे उम्मीद है आज पूरा दिन जो भाषण चलेंगे उसके बाद हम सब अपने दिल को टटोलेंगे कि हम किस हद तक पार्लियामेंट की अहमियत को रखने में व्यक्तिगत योगदान इसलिए क्योंकि ये पार्लियामेंट बनी किसानों के संघर्ष से है आज़ादी का संघर्ष किसानों ने सबसे ज़्यादा किया था और उन्हीं की तप से और त्याग से आज़ादी के वो हमको सफलता मिली गांधी जी के नेतृत्व में और बाकी नेताओं के नेतृत्व में तो इसलिए संसद के दिन किसानों की स्थिति पर भी विचार अगर इन्होंने किसान संसद लगा के किया है तो बहुत अच्छा काम किया एट द स्ट्रोक ऑफ द मिड नाइट आवर वेन द वर्ल्ड स्लीप इंडिया विल अवेक टू लाइफ एंड फ्रीडम And moving on to regional politics, Pudukkote constituency has caught the election fever, and with DMDK jumping into the contest, sources say that Chief Minister Jayalalitha will campaign in the constituency on the 7th of June. Our reporter Hari Haran has more on this. With information on Jayalalitha's campaign trip to Pudukkote, the constituency has started to heat up politically. This information comes exactly two days after the DMDK, the principal opposition party, announced formally that it will take part in the Pudukote by elections. Sources say Jayalalitha will tour the Pudukote constituency on the 7th of June. This is exactly four days before the by elections. And she's expected to return to Chennai on the same day, and she's expected to cover around 37 kilometers in the constituency. A helipad is also getting ready in Pudukote for Chief Minister's chopper to land. Uh, you must also remember the IIDM case announced that uh, Karthik Thundayman will contest uh, uh, in the Pudukote constituency from the party ticket and it had also deployed a 42 member special team to monitor the election campaign that includes 32 ministers as well. With the uh, DMK, PMK and almost major political blocs uh, boycotting this election, it is now a clear two-cornered fight between the DMDK and the ruling AIADMK. Jalalitha in all probability is expected to campaign on the 7th and Vijayakanth is also expected to campaign and the information is awaited on his campaign schedule. Will the other parties like the DMK, the CPI, CPIM uh, come forward and campaign in favour of the DMDK candidate? For that, we'll have to wait and watch. Over to the Lankan Tamils issue now. Nedumaran has slammed Sushma Swaraj, who headed the delegation to Lanka, saying she's talking about the Lankan Tamils issue without knowing the history of the war. Talking to reporters in Tamil Nadu, he said he deeply condemned Sushma Swaraj's comment that some political parties in Tamil Nadu are trying to create a rift there. Adding that just going to Lanka and meeting a few people there doesn't make her well acquainted with the situation prevalent there for years. And he also added that if UN takes up a general vote in Lanka, they will get to know the actual situation there. He's also asked Ms. Swaraj if she will question Rajapakshe over this issue. In another new development, the NLC contract workers have intensified their strike after the third rounds of talks have also failed. The NC, uh, NLC management, however, is still urging them to call off their strike. The NLC contract workers who have several demands, such as making them permanent workers and a hike in pay, among other demands, have been on a strike from the 21st of last month. The six rounds of talks which went on before the Labour Welfare Commissioner of Puducherry ended in a failure. Following this, a third round of talks went on with the Karlu district collector, which also ended in a failure yesterday. Allegations have been raised that education qualifications of the state IT minister Mukkur Subramanian published in the Tamil Nadu government website are false. Interestingly, this has been raised by members of his own party. They alleged that the minister on contesting the Lok Sabha elections from the Arni constituency in 2009 
had mentioned that he had failed in class 6th on the affidavit sworn by him. And on contesting the assembly elections in 2011, he had mentioned that he is pursuing his BA course in an open university. The opposite faction now alleges that the state government website says that the minister is a BA graduate. They question how could the minister be a graduate while his course is not even over. Alleging this in a letter, uh, it has been sent to the chief minister and the AI ADMK chief Jalalita. The Chennai police have seized two tons of ration rice which was to be smuggled to Andhra in a government vehicle. It was when the police were checking the vehicles in the Chennai-Kolkata highway near Red Hills that they found the smuggled rice. While they were inspecting a vehicle going from Chennai CMBT to Nellore in Andhra, they found 40 sacks of rice weighing 50 kilos each. Six women and the driver of the government vehicle have been arrested in connection to this. Engineering colleges under Anna University have started issuing application forms for admissions and 1,60,000 of them have been sold out within just two days of issuing. The issuing of the forms started day before yesterday for the 554 colleges under Anna University, Chennai. Chennai, Coimbatore, Trichy and 58 other centres across the state have started issuing the application forms. The very first day saw the issuing of 86,000 forms, 86, uh, forms and the second day saw 30,000. The university has decided to print more application forms seeing this intense demand. Ever since Nityananda was appointed as the 293rd head of the Madurai Adinamat, there have been mixed reactions. And now a newly formed group to revive the mud from Nityananda has announced that they will hold a protest today against his appointment. Following this, security has been beefed up in Madurai. And Nityananda and Aruna Girinadar have asserted that this is the work of certain anti-social elements who want to disrupt the peace in Madurai. Both of them have now said that they will meet Jalalita in person and give an explanation on this issue. We'll move to a short break now. More news and updates on the other side. Stay tuned.